Praise the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is Minister Bernard Woods coming live to you from Snellville, Georgia. Boy, it's an awesome time to be saved, delivered, and set free. It's a wonderful time to serve the Lord Jesus Christ in the, in the days that we're living in now. You know, I was thinking back before I just came on live how when I was coming up in the world, you know, when I was in darkness, <laughs> when I was sold out to Satan, I used to come out this time of night to go to the nightclubs, to hang out, me and my partners, hang out, ride the streets late at night, hanging out. And I thought about that, and I said, look at God, went from, went from, went from hanging out, serving the devil, now serving the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it's an honor to just come before brothers and sisters in Christ and people of precious like faith to share the gospel of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I am so grateful. I am so thankful. I take it not lightly and I do not take it for granted. I am so grateful and thankful what God is doing in my life and how he's blessed my life tremendously and how he's, um, you know, just totally gave me a transformation from darkness to light. <clears throat> I am so grateful and thankful. So this time of night is awesome for me because I remember I used to hang out like this. But, you know, now I hang out in the word of God, teaching the word of God, preaching the word of God and sharing the word of God with men and women all over the universe, men and women all over the United States of America, Canada, um, Brazil, Africa, wherever God allowed this video to go to. I am so grateful and thankful. It's just, an, it's just a privilege and an honor. I take it not lightly, and I do not take it for granted. And uh, I was I was meditating today, and I saw my video. You know, I was saw, and I saw how when I was supposed to have been talking about Noah, I kept bringing up a uh, lot name because I was focusing on what God told me to minister on. He told me to minister on the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. So I was so locked in to lot and ministering on that when I was talking about how God destroyed the first earth, the first world, and how God saved the eight people, Noah and his, and his sons and his daughters and his wife, you know, his, his daughter, his three sons and their wives and, his, and him and his wife. You know, I, I kept saying lot when it was supposed to be Noah. <laughs> I say, look at that, even Holy Woods, even Holy, Holy Minister Woods, you know, even he make a mistake. <laughs> and when I saw the video, I said, I said, Lord, I made a mistake like that. I was calling the man Lot when I supposed to have been saying Noah. <laughs> God said, you sure did. Holy Ghost said, you got to slow down, son. You be trying to get everything in at one time. Slow down, take your time and explain correctly, explain and explain clearly. I say, yeah, I got to slow down, Father. I got to slow down. I'd be so excited, you know. And I'm so grateful and thankful, you know, and uh, it's just an honor. It's just an honor to share this gospel worldwide with men and women all over this universe. And so what I do now, <clears throat> you know, I help people. Like I tell people, I don't see myself as a motivational speaker. I see myself as uh, a motivational transformer. I transform lives. If a person truly listened to the Holy Ghost speaking through Minister Bernard Woods, their life would be transformed and their life would never, ever be the same. And um, I am so grateful and thankful. And um, I'm going to take my time tonight. And I was meditating today and I was thinking on the Lord, you know, based on what I've been teaching on lately. And I was thinking on, I was saying, man, Lord, you know, and I was wondering that I, you know, did I say enough? Did I give enough? Did I do exact, you know, I know I do what he told me to do, but did I did exactly, did I share everything that was on his heart? Did I share everything on the Holy Spirit's heart to mankind the way he wanted me to share it, you know? So I was meditating. And the Lord was dealing with me, and he was dealing with me by HCFS. <laughs> HFCS, excuse me, HFCS. The acronyms HFCS. And I was like, HFCS. And I said, oh, okay, Lord. Oh, you the one you taught me a long time ago, which you taught me to look out for. 
And he said, yes, yeah, son, I want you to share that a little bit tonight before you go in, before you go into the heart. Share that a little bit tonight. So I said, okay, Lord, I'll share that a little bit tonight. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get started. Then I'm going to share a little bit tonight about HFCS, okay? And then I'm going to get into the word. Father, we just come before your presence right now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I'm so grateful and thankful for the blood of the everlasting covenant. I'm so grateful and thankful for the blood of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful and thankful that you have given me this great opportunity to preach and teach the gospel of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that this word shall go forth throughout the internet to all mankind, to every house, home, and every heart that hear this gospel, that their life would never, ever be the same. I decree and declare that Satan, you re I rebuke you, I bind you up, I tie your hands concerning Every, every word that go through the airways, I remind you that Jesus Christ defeated you over 2,000 years ago. He beat your butt good, and he paraded you down there in hell, and he stripped you and took back the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he paralyzed you for eternity. You, you have no power. Your destiny and your destination is the lake of fire that burned with brimstone. Father, I thank you that I take my time tonight, and I share these simple truths with mankind. And I thank you, Father, that everyone that hear these truths tonight, their life would never, ever be the same when they receive the truth and apply it to their lives and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Father, I give you praise. Father, I give you glory. And Jesus Christ, Father, I decree and declare that you would be glorified. Jesus Christ would be edified. And the body of Christ, we will continue to be edified because we are the body and Jesus Christ is the head. I give you praise, I give you glory, and I give you honor. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> let me start this clock. I should have been started because the Lord was dealing with me today. And, um, and when he was dealing with me today, I was thinking about HFCS, you know, and I was sharing through the videos how it's been truly stated. It's been, a, it's been a statement of truth, and it's been truly stated, and, and I believe it is a statement of truth, not to all black nationalities, but a lot, of our, a lot of our black nationalities, a lot of our black ethnic people, not only us, but, the, you know, they say minorities too, when you want to hide something from them, especially the dark-skinned people. When you want to hide something from the black race, put it in the book because the black man or the black woman does not read. We refuse to read. We go by what, what's been, we go by, you know, I say it like this. We go by generational things that's been done to us generationally. We go by what, what, what our parents used to do, our forefathers used to do. Or what we seen what our mother and our you know our father did, or we see what our friends do, the ones we hang with. So we go by that instead of us taking time out and reading and reading the ingredients on certain food items and certain things that we buy in the store. HFCS, I want you to never forget this, ladies and gentlemen. HFCS is high fruto corn syrup. When God taught me this a long time ago, and right now today, because of what he taught me about that, if I find out any food that have HFCS, high fructose corn syrup, I don't eat it. It is a dangerous, dangerous chemical, a sugar, glucose sugar that they put in the foods to get people hooked, not only get you hooked, but you become obesity and you become overweight. And I noticed when I was meditating on the, I was meditating before the Lord today, based on all the things that he had me teaching over the internet for these couple of days, and how he told me, you know, um, you know, have an urgency of decreeing and declaring the word of God. Have an urgency, son, to get this truth out. Have an urgency to preach the gospel. And I said, okay, Lord. When I was meditating on all, this, all the things that I've been saying, I taught on about come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. I taught on about how, um, I taught on that 
um, part one, part two, part three. I taught on um, come unto me all you that labor and the heavy laden. I taught on the heart, which I'm gonna speak a little bit on tonight. And I taught on um, I taught on all okay, you know. I'm trying to think of all the messages I taught on. <laughs> then the last one I taught on the night before about the America is the United States of America is in trouble. You know, that's the last one I taught on. And um, and then I taught on the meat. <laughs> and the Lord said to me, you know, I want you to, I want you to touch on HFCS tonight. So I said, okay, because I was meditating, you know, thinking and, and just listening to the Holy Ghost listening to the greatest teacher on plan, uh, uh, um, that is upon planet Earth. He's the greatest teacher on planet Earth, you know. And I was I was meditating and thinking, on, on, you know, talking to him and thinking about it. And high fructose corn syrup is so dangerous. It's in all your candies, mostly all your candies. It's in all your juices. You have to find out, when you look at your juices, ladies and gentlemen, you got to make sure that it does not say high fructose corn syrup. Stay away from high fructose corn syrup. Now, this is on top of the meat that I was teaching. On top of all those, when I was sharing, you, sharing with you about the meat, about red meat, beef, pork, chicken, um, you know, steak, pigs, uh, what else? Uh, and I ain't even get into the crabs and the lobsters and all that, which eats, which clean up the earth of the bottom of the sea. I ain't get into all of that, which is bad for the human being, because God told us in in the Bible, don't eat that. <laughs> he said only eat, you only eat the skin, the ones with the fins, the scales and the fins, which is the fish. He never said nothing about lobsters and crabs. He said don't eat it, because that's the that's like the cockroach of the earth. <laughs> so when well, I was teaching on those things but I didn't touch on the crab and the lobster and I didn't touch on the shrimps and all that and I didn't touch on the clams and all that but um, when, when I was sharing with you about the certain meats and what meat does to the body and I was sharing with you how we don't have the right, proper teeth because if God wanted us to eat meat he would have gave us the proper tools to handle the meat which is your teeth would have been able to rip chew and tear the meat so you can properly digest it but your body is not designed to digest meat we don't have a intestines like the animals the animals have a different intestines those who was who was created to eat meat their intestines are different than the intestines of the human being the human creature so when i was touching on all of that and showing you what meat does to the body, and showing you how meat attacks the heart. And now, and, and you know, and I said to the Lord when I was meditating today, I said, "Man, I see something that, wow, Lord, I didn't see when I was teaching it. I noticed all the diseases. Ooh, woo! The main focus is to shut down the heart. Good God Almighty." All your diseases, all the diseases that attacks a human body, the body of a human creature, of those that grace planet Earth, that came through the womb of a woman. Every disease that comes from the animals is designed to attack and shut down the heart. When I was meditating, when I saw that, I said, whoa, she cut up a conde. I didn't see that. When I was teaching it. And now when he talked to me and told me today, when I was meditating in this presence, hanging out with my wife, hanging out, just, just being, just being Bernard, just being the minister that I am. And the Holy Ghost go to talking because I have a personal divine relationship with him. He talks to us all the time. You have to put yourself in a place that you can hear him and fellowship with him. No matter where you are, you can always in fellowship and be in oneness with the Holy Spirit. You, that's what I really want to, I want to teach people how to have an intimate relationship with the Holy Ghost, with God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He talks to you all the time. Most of us don't hear him because we got too much going on. We're too cluttered. You have to get in your quiet time. You, even when you're with your wife or your husband, you can still 
be with your wife and your husband, and you can still be fellowshipping and listening to the voice of the Holy Ghost talking to you. And when he said that to me, and when I saw that, I saw it in my preaching. I said, man, I didn't see it at the time that I was ministering. All the diseases is designed to shut down the heart. Because God, remember God told the children of Israel, the life of the flesh is in the blood. God told the children of Israel, don't eat nothing with the blood running through it. Why? Because he said the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you as an atonement for your sins. Ooh, woo! And here it is, all the diseases. That comes from me. The number one goal is to shut down the heart, to kill the heart, because the heart is dead. <laughs> you out of here, ladies and gentlemen. You gone. You are out of here. You are out of here. You gone. And I pray that you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ before you meet him face to face. Because woe to him if you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and you don't know him. And you never received them. And you never had a chance. And you never had an opportunity. Or you didn't take that opportunity and receive him before the breath of life leave your body. Woe to you. So, I notice all the diseases tax the heart. Now, HFCS does the same exact thing. It not only attacks the heart, but it attacks the liver. Listen to this. I wrote this down. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! High fructose corn syrup. When I see this, I don't buy it. <laughs> when God showed me about this some years ago, I was like, good, no, Lord. He said, yes, son. I was dealing with some, you know, my blood pressure has, has went up one time when I was, I'm, I'm going to go back to this, but I'm going to share this with you. My blood pressure went up one time. When I was, um, you know, as a truck driver and as a truck driver, a commercial vehicle driver, we all have to keep our blood, t blood pressure at a certain level. So by me being so disciplined and I was, you know, and I said, wait a minute, Lord, I, took, I take my blood pressure at the house and I saw that it had went up. And I said, wait a minute, Lord, I don't eat meat. I'm doing this. I'm eating this. I'm eating that. And I'm eating. And I, where's the, and I start speaking. And I start, I start speaking in my heavenly language. And I got quiet. I said, now, Lord, tell me where I'm missing it. Because my blood pressure shouldn't went up like that. Well, I'm missing it somewhere, Lord. Where I'm missing it at? She And when I start speaking in tongues, speaking in my heavenly language, pulling on the Holy Ghost, pulling on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I got quiet. Then I heard the Holy Ghost. Clear as day. I heard him. He said, go look at the box of crackers that you've been eating. And I jumped up. I told my wife. I said, baby. He said, uh, go look at the box of crackers. She said, huh? I said, the Lord said, go look at the box of crackers. So I went. I jumped up and I went in the kitchen. Because I was eating rich crackers at that time. Because I love rich, you know, rich crackers. You know, I was getting the ones that was low in sodium. First I was eating the regular ones. Then I backed off the regular ones. And I was getting the one that was low in sodium. Because I wanted to make sure... I knew sodium and salt raises the blood pressure, so I was trying to make sure I take I keep my blood pressure under control. I went and looked at the box of crackers in my kitchen, in my um my closet, in my cabinet. I pulled that box of crackers out and I looked and the Lord said, read the ingredients. I read the ingredients and I came across the word high fructose corn syrup. I said, you got to be kidding me. And the Lord said, that's your problem right there. You got to stay away from high fructose corn syrup, son. I say, and I was eating this with sardines. I was eating this with tuna fish. I was eating this with salad. And you mean to tell me, Lord, this is, he said, that's your problem right there. Because I was like, how can it rise? And I'm eating salad. I clean, I, you know, I eat salad. I eat um, um, olives. I clean, I, I, I rinse my olives off to get the sodium out. And once I rinse off the olives, I slice them up, put them in my salad. 
you know, I rinse off the bell pepper, I rinse off anything that has sodium. So when I eat my sardines, I open the can a little bit and I rinse all that stuff out. And then I just take the sardine itself and I put it in my salad. So I, I try to, I, I, I cleanse myself of sodium much as I can. And then I eat my salad. I may put a little bit um, um, extra extra olive oil on my salad and I eat it. You know, and I put pepper. I don't put salt. And then I put the herbs on my salad. But the problem was the cotton picking crackers. When I saw hot fruit corn syrup in the ingredients, I took them box of crackers and I threw them in the garbage. The Lord said, that's your problem. High fruto corn syrup. You have to stay away from it, son. Then I went into a deep study on high fruto corn syrup. And I saw what it does. It, it, it's bad for the body. And I saw. I went on I went on a <laughs> I went on an experiment. I started looking at everything in the grocery stores, and I started looking at everything in the truck stops. And anything I saw with HFCS, I said, this is designed. Somebody is behind this. Remember I told you, ladies and gentlemen, about um, wanting to um, get rid of a certain nationality of people? <laughs> and I told you what they do. They put it in the food because they believe and they know black people don't read. We go by what we used to eat. We go by what some friends ate. We go by how my friends, our family members ate. And we go by where we was brought up, how we was eat, how we was brought up eating because our parents didn't know. So our parents passed down to us the bad eating habits. And so we picked it up. And because our parents was eating or because we was eating it when we was first coming up as little kids, we stuck to that pattern. And the pattern is designed to take you to your early grave. And so God put me on this internet because he loved mankind. He loved brothers and sisters in Christ. He loved those who haven't received Christ yet and those who have received Christ yet. He wants you to live out all the number of your days. He said, I will, he said, he said, I will bless you and I will prosper you and you will live out. All, he said, all the number of your days I will fulfill, said the Lord of hosts. He said in Psalms 91, 16, he said, he said, I would, he said, uh, what, he said, um, I would, he said in Psalms 91, 16, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. But you must eat right, ladies and gentlemen. God is not going to come down here and force you to eat right. Because we are free moral agents. We have what is called, we have a will. We are not robots and we are not AI. We have what is called a will. So God will not assert your will. He will not violate your will. He's a gentleman. He created you in his image and his likeness, but he also gave you what is called a will. You have a will. You have a right to make choices and decisions. We live and die by the decisions and the choices we make. We live and die by the decisions and choices we make. We are prosperous or we are in poverty by the decisions and the choices that we make on a day-by-day -day basis. You either gonna succeed or you gonna fail by the decisions or the choices that you make on a day-by-day -day basis. So, I make a long story short. My wife will tell you, my sons will tell you, I remind my sons every time they come to the house, when you go to the store, stay away. Now, they, I, I tell them, all I can do is tell them. I can't do it for them. They have their own heart. They have their own right to make their own choices and decisions. They have to, be, they have to come to God on their own. They have to believe to eat right on their own. But as their father, I tell them the truth. I don't force them to eat like me. I just, I just tell them and they see how daddy eat. And I tell my sons, HFCS is in cookies, is in certain cakes, is in pies, is in ice cream. You got, you got the, you have the, you have to find the ice cream 
You have to find the cakes. You have to find the cookies. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you have to read. You cannot be lazy. Your soul depends on it. You cannot be lazy. Your life depends on it. You must pick up the item and read. It's in all your juices. It's in all your sodas, especially sodas. Sodas are full of high fructose corn syrup. So you have to find the soda. If you like soda, you have to find the soda that does not have HFCS. If you like cakes, you have to find the cake that, that doesn't have HFCS. If you like ice cream, you have to find the ice cream that does not have high fructose corn syrup. You have to stay away from it. If you like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you have to find the peanut butter and the jelly that does not have high fructose corn syrup. It is very dangerous. Let me show you. Now watch this. Watch this. When I was meditating today on the Holy Ghost, meditating, listen, what he want me to say tonight. And I'm, you know, man, I ain't know I was going to preach this long on it, but what he wanted me to say tonight, I was listening to him. He said, I want you to start off with HLCS and then go into a little bit of the heart. Show them how every disease is designed to shut the heart down. I said, good God, I didn't see it. But when I went back and look at my notes and when I went back and meditate on how I was preaching and teaching, I, I said, boy, that was, I didn't see it while I was doing it after I meditate on it. Then I saw it's designed to attack the heart and shut the heart down. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, HFCS, somebody, and it's in all the grocery stores. It's in mostly all your restaurants. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you have to stay away from HFCS, high fructose corn syrup. It's a drug. It, 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 it causes you to have obesity and it causes you to gain weight unconsciously and unknowingly. It's been designed to be put in your food because the pharmaceutical people, the, 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 the medical industry, they need to keep these billions of dollars coming in. They need to keep these billions of dollars coming in. And the only way they're going to keep these billions of dollars coming in, they have to put it in your food. And if you don't read, you in trouble. If you don't read, if you just pick up everything, oh, I picked this up because we used to eat that. Yeah, we eat that too. Yeah, get them cookies over there. Yeah, get them cakes over there. Yeah, get the ice cream. Go, go get the ice cream. And you bring in all this HFCS. Now watch this. The Holy Ghost showed me this. You bring in all this HFCS on top of the meat you eating. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I showed you about the meat and what meat does to the human body, what it does to the human vessel. I showed you beef attacks the brain and the spinal cord. Now, you may not like it, but it's the truth. Doctors have proven it. They have studied it. Beef attacks the brain and the spinal cord. HFCS, it attacks the brain and the memory. And they believe it's the number one cause of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Dementia, ladies and gentlemen, it comes from HFCS. Now, I'm supposed to be preaching on the gospel. I got to hurt and get to the gospel, but I got to flow with the Holy Ghost. He is leading me this way. But I'm helping you, ladies and gentlemen. On top of all that meat you're eating, you are stacking your system with HLCS. <laughs> and then, then you, <laughs> then you come to the church. And then, I'm talking about church folks. I'm talking about my brothers and sisters in Christ too. Who be having parties and having dinners and having get togethers. And having, you know, fellowship with one another. And you don't read. You're just eating all this food. You're gaining all this weight. And you're constantly going to the doctor, spending all this money. And they are laughing at you. 
Because they know what they did. They know what they're doing. They know how to get people to come into the medical field. They know how to get people to come into the office. And then they want to put you on these pills that cost millions of dollars. So they are constantly making billions of dollars on people who are ignorant about reading. Because if you read the ingredients, you would know to stay away from this kind of food. So you're not stupid. You're not dumb. You're just ignorant in the area of eating. And it's going to cost you your life. You'll go to the graveyard early than, you, early than you're supposed to go, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to read this to you. And then I'm going to go a few scriptures about the heart. And then I'm going to close it up. I'm going I'm to close it out. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to what HFCS does. Excuse me. Listen to what HFCS does. <clears throat> High fructose corn syrup causes, <laughs> listen to this, diabetes. Inflammation, Ooh, high triglycerides, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's saying that it doesn't have to be alcohol. It's non-alcohol fatty liver disease. This is what HFCS, this is what high fructose corn syrup causes. It causes also obesity and weight gain. Mm, mm, mm. It is also known as the number one is also known as a key factor in obesity, weight gain, dementia, and Alzheimer's disease causes the mind to forget. It attacks the mind. It attacks the brain the same way beef does. Beef attacks the brain and the spinal cord. Ooh, woo! HFCS attacks the brain in dementia and Alzheimer's disease to make you not remember. It also takes, listen to this. Now, if you eating meat all the time or every other day you eat meat, and I told you how long it takes meat to get out of your body, how long it takes meat to digest in your system, and then it says if you all bloated and, and, and full up with this meat, it says it sits in and it rottens on the inside by the colon and all the diseases is formed because of the meat. All the diseases because it's not breaking down properly because your the body was never designed. Your, your intestines was never designed to process meat. So all this is in you. And on top of this, you put in HLCS. High fructose corn syrup. <laughs> Lord have mercy. It takes nine days. Ooh, woo. Nine days <laughs> to reverse high fructose corn syrup. And they say the number one way to reverse it is don't take, don't have no intake of it. Don't have no intake of high fructose corn syrup. They said take up to over four days for it to even try to digest in the body, in the intestines. So you got up to four days for it to try to digest, sitting on top of the meat and the disease that's already in your body. Then it takes nine days to try to reverse the high fructose corn syrup that's been sitting on top of you, sitting in you over four days Trying to tr trying to digest through your intestines. Oh boy, I'm trying to help my brothers and sisters in Christ. I believe I'm helping you. I believe somebody listening to me and they're going to take this teaching and they're going to say, boy, thank God for Minister Bernard Wood. Thank God for the Holy Ghost teaching and teaching and speaking through Minister Bernard Woods. I'm getting taught too, ladies and gentlemen, like I always told you. The, the, the Bible said the minister must first be partaker of the fruit. God had to deal with me about this first before I can bring it to you. So as you hear it, I hear it too. I, I always look at my teaching. I always look at my tapes because I'm be, I be, I'm amazed how the Holy Ghost speaks and, uh, and teach through me. I'm very amazed how he speaks and teach through me. So I look at my tapes over and over. 
I want to make sure I'm a partaker. I want to make sure I practice what I preach. I want to make sure I'm a doer of the word instead of a hearer only. For the only those who are doers of the word, he and he only shall be blessed in his deeds. Not hearing the word only, you're going to be blessed. Jesus said, he that heareth and doeth the word, that person, that woman, that man, that boy, that girl shall be blessed in his deeds. So I'm going to make sure, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a, I'm a doer of the living word of God. So I listen to my take to hear how God spoke to me and through me to mankind. And I'm telling you, HFCS, stay away from it. Read, ladies and gentlemen, pick up, read. It's in your crackers. It's in your cookies, it's in your cakes, it's in your ice cream, it's in some of your tater chips, it's in your sodas, it's in your juices. Now, there are certain juices you can get with no high fructose corn syrup. It's in, all, it's in a lot of breads. You got to find the bread that says no high fructose corn syrup because by law, they must put it in the package. If it's not there, they must stated that it's not there or they can be sued. So by law, they have to have it front and center. If it's in the, if it's in the ingredients, they must, they must, they must um, make sure that it's stated. They must make sure that it's worded that high fructose corn syrup is in this package. They must let you know by the FDA. So the FDA is saying, make sure you put it in writing. So if they eat it, they at their own they at their own risk. Then you cannot be sued because you placed it on the package. So if they eat it, that's their fault. You got to be ready, ladies and gentlemen. You got to understand this. This ain't nothing to play with. So I'm telling you, listen. It takes nine days to that to digest in the system and or reverse it. And they say the best way to reverse high fructose corn syrup is don't intake it, period. Mm, mm, mm. It's in your peanut butter and your jelly. It's in your syrup. You got to find the peanut butter that says no high fructose corn syrup. You got to find the jelly. God, leave 30 minutes up already. I got to stop, ladies and gentlemen. You got to find the jelly that says no high fructose corn syrup. You got to find the syrup that says no high fructose corn syrup. For everything that they have high fructose corn syrup in, they made another they made another one with no high fructose corn syrup. So therefore, you have to. You must. It's imperative to you to read the ingredients on the label. You must read, ladies and gentlemen. Your life depends on it. You must read. If you see HFCS, stay away from it. Go find the ones that don't have HFCS. Mostly all your sodas have HFCS. You have some juices out there that is 100% that don't have, and it says it on the label, no high fructose corn syrup. That's the one you want to use. That's the one you want to take. That's the one you want to put inside your body. But you got to be careful of the sodium and you have to be careful of the sugar. Because sugar is not good for you. Too much sugar is not good. They say sugar is just like marijuana and dope and cocaine. People get hooked on it and you can't get away from it. Now, so before I end up, 30 minutes went that quick. Before I end up, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share some scriptures with you. And remember, all these diseases, it attacks the heart. Every disease attacks the heart. To shut the heart down. When I was studying this. When I was meditating on this. I didn't see it when I was preaching it. I only saw it when I was meditating with the Holy Ghost. And he showed me. One thing in common about these diseases. All of them are designed. To kill the heart. Because that's where the life is at. The life is in the blood. And the blood is pumped. Through the heart. Now one person said. High fructose corn syrup, it attacks the cells, the red blood cells, it attacks it so that it cannot carry oxygen throughout the body. 
Woo! You know the function of your red blood cells? The function of your cells in your body, ladies and gentlemen, is to carry oxygen throughout the whole body. That's the function of your cells. If your cells cannot carry oxygen throughout the whole body, you out of here. You dead. You dead within a few minutes. And that's what high fructose corn syrup does. It attacks the cells so that the cells cannot form or, or, or function properly to carry the oxygen throughout the whole body. <laughs> All this on top of the meat that you eat. <laughs> Ooh, woo. I'm giving you the truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me, God. I want to share these scriptures with you before I before I um before I go into prayer. I want to share these scriptures with you. Go to Psalms 119. Psalms. I'm gonna start off with Psalms 119. I'm gonna start off with the um, first verse. I'm gonna start off with verse one. Go to Psalms 119. Psalms 119. I'm gonna start off with verse one. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk who walk in the law of the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are Bernard and they that keep his testimonies and that seek him and that seek the Lord Jesus Christ with their whole heart. Not your half heart, not part of your heart, with your whole heart. Listen to this again, ladies and gentlemen. Blessed are they and Bernard, and whosoever watching me on this video, that keep God's testimony, keep the Lord Jesus Christ's testimonies, and that seek the Lord Jesus Christ with their whole heart. It said, they also do no iniquity, and they walk in his ways. They also do no iniquity. They are not lawless. They not they don't they don't cater to sin and they don't cater to secret sins. Iniquity is lawless, sin, and secret sin. That's what iniquity is, ladies and gentlemen. Go to verse um go to verse go to verse 10. It said, with my whole heart, Psalms 119, verse 10. With my whole heart I have sought thee. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, I have sought thee, Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. You see that? Verse 10, with my whole heart have I sought thee, the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, let not me, Bernard, and whosoever watching this video, wander from thy commandments. Don't wander off from the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ before you daily by staying in this book, by staying in the Bible, or read a book that's pertaining to the Bible. I have people ask me all the time, well, did you read any other book, man? You don't read the Quran, you don't read the, um, the Jewish, um, the, the Quran, or, the, or you don't read the uh, Watchtower, you don't read, what do I want to read that for? I got the truth. No, I don't read that. Oh, man, well, you're supposed to know your enemy. <laughs> I say, what? I'm supposed to know my enemy. <laughs> I said, this book told me my enemy is defeated. <laughs> so why I got to read another book to try to convince me that the enemy is defeated when I already read this book and this book told me what Jesus did to the enemy. No, ladies and gentlemen, I read the Bible and I read other books pertaining to this Bible. I don't read no Holy Quran. I don't read no no Muslim books. I don't read no Watchtower. I don't read none of that. I read the B-I-B-L-E, the Believer's Instruction Before Leaving Planet Earth. You understand this? You walk in victory. I done put this to the test. I done proved it in certain areas of my life. I know this book works. So why would I go read something else? <laughs> you know, bro, ask me that, you know, well, you read about the devil? They're trying to show you about the devil. <laughs> I said, brother, the Bible already tell me what happened to him. I don't need to read about him. 
I already know you defeated, but he's supposed to be your enemy. You got to know what your enemy doing. Yeah, listen there, brother. If you stick with this book right here, you stick with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will understand and know the enemy is already defeated. He's already under my feet, and he's already destined, and des his destiny and destination is the lake of fire that burn with brimstone. This book tells you he has no power or no authority over a child of God who know that blood covenant rights, who in blood right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. No, cheat the Bible says, my son, attend unto my word. Incline thy ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. <laughs> I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is the key. I don't read no other books. No, I just read this book. This is the best book. This is the awesomest book. This is the only book of truth that mankind needs. There is no other truth like this book. None. I, I, I mean, people be talking about, hey, Wood, man, I got... <laughs> and I laugh because it's sad, you know, and these supposed to be ministers of the gospel. Let the enemy come in and slick them in the mind, make them think. Because the devil... Listen, ladies and gentlemen, listen. Listen, listen, listen. That, that fool know. He knows now. If you stick with this book, you will wipe him out. He knows that. He, he knows that. If you stick with this book, which has been tried, the Bible says the word of God has been tried by fire, and it comes out as pure gold. It's been tried, ladies and gentlemen. You know, there was an accident one time. I don't remember which state it was in, but I remember seeing it on the TV. And it's amazing how God had me there at the right time, at the right place, at the right opportunity to see this, 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 um, this episode. It was a lady. She was in the car. I don't know what happened, but she, her car was malfunctioning or something. Excuse me. She got out in time, but her car caught on fire. So some, some people driving by, they saw it. They helped her get out the car. They got her away from the car. And she was over there until the post, the ambulance, you know, the um, the um, fire trucks came and all that. So they, you know, so the car was up in flame, the car was up in flame. And she was standing over there by the police, and everybody was standing up by her. And she, and then she just bust out, started crying. So there was one that, you know, you you out of the car? Why are you crying? And she said, someone had gave her a Bible. And she 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 finally remembered, because I guess she was so hysterical, they you know, they got her out the car. The car was burnt. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. The car was the car had burnt. The, 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 when they got there, they put the fire out. But that car was burnt up. It, it was like nothing, and nothing could could have been alive in that car. Everything was gone. It was burnt up from the front to the back. It was burnt up. So they got the fire department, got there, put the fire out in the car. And she was back there crying. And so the fire people, when they put the fire out, the car was still smoking a little bit. So they went in to look into the car to see if anything, if any human beings was in the car, whatever. And they found the Bible. Now she back there crying. And she told the man. Someone gave her this Bible, and she remember putting the Bible on the console or the seat. I can't remember which one, but the Bible was on the console or the seat. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. I saw this with my own eyes, and if some of you see, if some of you remember this, 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 this came on the, the news. If you saw it, you say, "Yeah, Minister Woods telling the truth." The fire department, the firemen, whoever that guy was, he walked in there to look into the car. To make sure nobody else was in the car. Because he didn't know. You know. the late, They didn't know. If the late, All they saw was the car on fire. They got there. They put it out. Took them a while. They put the fire. They blocked the road. Traffic was going by slow. And everybody was looking at the car. She was over there standing there. She was crying. They was wondering why she was crying. They thought she was crying because she lost her car. I know that's one reason why she was crying. But then when they came and asked her. She said. I was crying because someone gave me a Bible. And I remember the Bible was in the car. On the console or the seat. <laughs> to make a long story short. God is my witness. The fireman went into the car to check to make sure nobody else was there. And he saw the Bible. 
when he grabbed that Bible and walked back to that lady or walked back to the little crowd that was standing back there, he said, who's the person that owned this car? And the lady, they said, this lady right here. He said, ma'am, this is the only thing I found that, that was in perfect condition. Ladies and gentlemen, the car was burnt inside out. The Bible was never touched. Now you explain that to me. And he gave the lady the Bible. And the, and the, and the, the person who was interviewing her on the scene, because she came to the spot, the TV announcer, they said, this is a miracle. <laughs> You mean to tell me your car is burnt like that and the Bible was not even touched? And the, uh, and the fireman picked the Bible up and gave it to the woman who was crying because she thought her Bible got burnt up in the fire. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, as a minister of the gospel of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I don't need to read no other book but this book. If you stay in this book and if you attend to this book like the Bible, like the Lord Jesus Christ tell you, you got the truth, you, you have the truth, you got the victory, you walk in victory. This book has been tested. This book has been tried. This book has been proven. The devil knows if he can get you away from this book, he will tear your behind up. But he also knows if you stay in this book, and he can't get you from this book, you will wipe him out. How many times? All the time. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, every minute, every moment, every second. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Minister Woods is telling you, if you stay in the Bible and you get this book in your heart, like the word of God says, and you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you get his word in your heart, you will Satan will stay destroyed in your life 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, every minute, every moment, every second. You will constantly, all the time, walk in victory. He can't touch you, ladies and gentlemen. He can only get you if you get away from this book. If you pull away from this book, if you pull away from Jesus, remember the word of God is Jesus and Jesus is the word of God. As long as you stay in Jesus, <laughs> you will walk in victory all the days that you live upon this planet. I'm telling you, I don't put this book to the test and I've been and I'm still putting it to the test right now today. I'm still walking by faith, not by sight. I'm still proving this book. I'm still uh, applying this book to my life daily. Do you get tired, Woods? Yes, I'm in the flesh. The flesh don't want to speak. The flesh don't want to decree and declare. Your flesh fights you every day. But I press, Lord. I press, brothers and sisters in Christ. Press to stay in this book. Press to stay with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I press to stay faithful and disciplined and dedicated to the living word of God. And I'm telling you, your life will never, ever be the same. Come on, I'm going to give you a few more scriptures that I'm going to pray. Because that thing went off 30 minutes ago. Come on, it went off a few minutes ago. Verse number 10, it said, With my whole heart I have sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I will not or shall not sin against thee. You see that, ladies and gentlemen? The word of God have I hidden in my heart that I shall not and will not sin against thee. I'm going to give you, excuse me, I'm going to give you a few more scriptures. Go to Shikalabakunarisebe. Yemabakunarosebe. Shikalabakunarisebe. Yemabakunarosebe. Go to Ecclesiastes. I'm going to finish with Ecclesiastes 7 chapters. Ecclesiastes 7 to, let me start Ecclesiastes 7 chapters. Ecclesiastes the 7 chapters. I had wrote it down a few scriptures. And I stayed on HFCS. I didn't know the Lord was going to use me that much in HFCS. Ah, she called a book in the recipe. Ecclesiastes the 7 chapters. Ecclesiastes 7 chapters. I'm going to start with the she called a book in the recipe. 
It says, I'm going to start with 7th chapter, 22nd verse. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. For oftentimes also thy own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise have cursed others. <laughs> Look what Solomon said. Solomon said, your own heart know this. Solomon said, listen to this. Solomon said, for oftentimes also thy own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise have cursed other people. <laughs> or talk bad about other people. And Solomon said, your heart knows it. It's in your heart. That's why the Bible says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues, geographic boundaries of life. I taught on that already, but it's the geographic boundaries of life. It will decide whether you be successful. It will decide whether you be victorious or will decide whether you be defeated. Your heart, how you keep your heart. And Solomon telling you right here, for oftentimes also thy own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise have cursed others. Then verse, two, I'm going to go down to verse 24. Um, no, I'm going to go to verse 20. I'm a, Don't go to verse 24. Go to verse 20. Verse 25, go to verse 25. Look, watch this. I apply, my, I apply my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and to reason of, and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. Listen to what Solomon is saying. Listen to this. I'm taking you somewhere and then I'm going to pray. He says, I apply my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Verse 26. And I find more bitter than death. Now he's saying he find this more bitter than death. Listen to what Solomon said. Now he was one of the wisest men that ever graced planet earth. He was one of the wisest kings that ever graced planet earth. Listen to what he said. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart ooh, ooh, is snares and nets. Her heart is like a snares and nets. You know what a snare and a net does? It traps you. A net puts you in a trap. A net catch bait. In other words, they use a net to catch the animal or they use a net to catch the creature. Ooh, woo. And he said, this is what a woman is. Listen to this. I'm going to read that again. Listen to this. And I find more bitter than the death. I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Good God Almighty. Who so, who so pleases God? Now listen to this. He said, who so pleases God escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Good God Almighty. This woman is Totally dangerous. Ooh, oh, she must be devil incarnated. Listen to this. I'm going to read this again. Listen to this. And I find more bitter than death. He said, I find, now death is, death is a hurting thing. When we lose a loved one or a loved one go home to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, and they, they were so important to the family or the bloodline, because we was meant to live forever. But, Satan, but but Adam sold us out. And he sold us out to Satan and sin. He sold us out to sin. So now therefore because of sin. Man dies. Man give up the ghost. Man live. Man, man lifespan has been cut short. Because of sin. And so therefore. The way God created every human being. To live for eternal. In this natural realm, we can't live eternal in this natural realm no more. We must go on from this natural realm 
We either gonna go up or we gonna go down. We are the deciding factor how we live on this planet. But listen to what Solomon said. And death hurts. We miss a, I miss my mom. I miss my dad. I wish my mom would have saw. She saw me get saved. She saw her words come to pass. She saw after all those years telling me, boy, you better get saved. You better get saved. You better leave the women's and get saved before Jesus come back. You better get saved before Jesus come back. Leave them women alone and get saved before Jesus come back. And I used to be out there at the nightclub on the dance floor. And here come my mama. Here come these words. Get saved before Jesus come back. Get saved before Jesus come back. Get saved before Jesus come back. I be down this down south. Me and my homeboys hanging out. Here come mama. Get saved before Jesus come back. Them words hunted me. No matter how many women I tried to be with, no matter how many nightclubs I went to, them words hunted me. And my mama lived to the day she saw God, God honor her words. God saved me, delivered me, and set me free. She saw it come to pass. She saw how God blessed my life. She saw her grandchildren before she left here. All her grandkids. I told the Lord, Lord, let her live long enough to see my last child. When my wife got pregnant with our last child, I said, Lord, let her live long enough to see it. And I'll never forget, on the Easter Sunday, I told my wife, take the boys to church. God spoke to me to take my baby boy that was just born not too long ago when he was born to visit my mom. I ain't said nothing to my mom. I popped up on my mother with my baby boy, my baby boy. And she was shocked. She said, hey, I thought you went to church. I said, no, God told me to come see you and let you spend time with Brandon. And she was like, huh? I said, yes, he told me. He spoke to me and told me to come see you and spend time with Brandon. Everybody was at the house. My dad was gone to church. All the grandkids were gone with my dad. And it was me, my mama, my baby boy, and the Holy Ghost, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And my mama held my son. My mama held my son. She saw him. God honored my words. He let my mama live long enough to see her last grandchild. He was the last one born in our family. And my mama saw him, held him, kissed him, played with him. And we sat down and we talked about the Lord. We talked about how faithful God is, how faithful he is to his word. I miss my mom. I was very close to my mom. I was close to my dad, too. My dad did the best he could. I began to understand after God matured me in the things of God, I began to understand the way my dad came up, why he was the way he was. I began to understand the importance of a father. And I remember I took that message and I preached, in the, I preached to the men. I, I, I rode up and down the peninsula of Florida with Minister Rock, and Minister Kenneth Johnson with his wife, Zona Rock. Sometime Connie went and my wife went. I gave myself to the ministry of the prison ministry because I wanted every man in that prison to understand what fatherhood was all about and what the highest call that a man can ever achieve in this life is to be a father. Now, Father Day is coming up in a few more days. And I gave myself that. I, I threw myself on the Lord to teach on fatherhood to all those men incarcerated in the state of Florida at the time. I dedicated my life to that. For about, I think me and Rock and Minister Kenny did that for over 15 years. Over 15 years, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm getting ready to pray. I got all that from this one scripture right here. 
Solomon said, I see, he said, and I find more bitter than death. The woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso pleases God, good God Almighty, shall escape from her but the sinner shall be taken by her. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm finish up right now. But I just wanted to share this truth with you. Lord, have mercy about that verse. He said, I found more bitter than death. And death is a hard thing. I know a lot of you miss your parents. A lot of you miss your loved ones. There are some loved ones that left your life and you miss them. And death hurts. I don't care how much we think it don't. Death hurts because we miss our loved ones. But the Bible promises us those that are in Christ, we will, he promises us, we will see them again. If we live right on this planet and we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we walk faithfully with the Lord, God promised us that we will see our loved ones again. And so I say to you, my brothers and sisters, you may say, Brother Woods, man, you was different tonight. Yeah, I had to slow down tonight because I was messing up last night, calling Lot, calling Noah Lot. When I should have been saying Noah, I was saying Lot. Because <laughs> I was so focused in on doing what God told me to do, preach about Sodom and Gomorrah. So I was locked in on Lot. And I even called Noah Lot when I should have been saying this, Noah and his sons. I said it was Lot and his sons. And it was Noah I meant to be talking about. I was talking about Noah at that time when God destroyed the earth with the flood. So I had to calm down. I had to, I had to take my time tonight so I don't mess up. And you may be saying, Brother Woods, man, good God Almighty. Brother, I never seen that about HFCS. I didn't know I was going to speak long on it, but I knew the Holy Ghost after, after meditating on him, after meditating with him today, I knew that's what he wanted me to start off with. He said, I want you to start off with HFCS and share with them what I taught you about HFCS. High fruit corn syrup. Ladies and gentlemen, you must read. Please, for God's sake, read the ingredients. Please, your life depends on it. These people are betting that you will never read. They are hoping that you will never read. They are, they are predicting that you will never read so they can gain the wealth that they continuously gain off of ignorant people. Not dumb, not stupid. You're just ignorant in the area of eating. And it's costing you. It's costing you, your bloodline, your generation, and your genealogy billions of dollars. And you may be saying, Brother Woods, man, I need to receive Jesus Christ, Woods. What do I need to do? The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, and 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus, from, Jesus Christ from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. I believe that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead for me. And you said, I shall be saved. You said, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Father, thank you for accepting me into your kingdom. I believe from this day forth, I have a new name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. From this day forth, I believe that I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for accepting me into your kingdom. And brothers and sisters in Christ, in Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. Those who repeated that prayer after me, I say welcome to the family of God. And I say that your life would never, ever be the same. I say from this day forth, go to a church that preach and teach the gospel of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and hang around people with, with precious like faith. I say that you, I say hang around with people that build you up and not tear you down. And now my brothers and sisters in Christ, you saved, you delivered, you set free. And you didn't understand about HFCS. 
You just picked up anything in the store. You just picked it up because that's what you was that's what you was taught and trained, and that's how you grew up for all these years. So you didn't you just didn't care. You just eat any kind of way. And now the Lord Jesus Christ is bringing this truth to, to you through Minister Bernard Woods. And you say, Woods, I need to repent. I saw your videos and I was like, man, I don't care what Woods say. I'm going to eat the way I want to eat. But now in your quiet time, the Lord dealt with you. And if you're truthful and honest, you saying, Lord, please forgive me. Brother Minister Woods, you were speaking through Minister Woods the truth. And Father, I want to I want to ask you to forgive me. Because Minister Woods is doing what you shared in his heart to do, to try to help us live by all the number of our days so we can fulfill the purpose, the plan, and the will of God on planet Earth. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins unto him, the Lord God Almighty, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, I want to ask you to forgive me for not being obedient. Forgive me for not reading the ingredients. Forgive me for just eating any kind of way. All out of order. Just wild in my eating. And Father, I thank you for allowing me to see this teaching from Minister Bernard Woods about HFCS. The truth about high fructose corn syrup. And Father, I thank you that from this day forth, Father, I believe that I'm forgiven. I believe that you wash me cleanse and you cleanse me through the blood of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, I want to thank you right now that you say who the Son set free is free indeed. I want to thank you right now for forgiving me of all my sins, forgiving me for not taking to heart the truth of your word that's coming through, Minister Bernard Woods. And from this day forth, Father, I ask you to help me be a studious person. Help me be disciplined and help me in the, to eat in moderation, to be a disciplined person, Father, in the way I eat, to have the proper knowledge in the way I eat. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, those who repeated that prayer after me, I want to tell you, Jesus loved you. He forgive you and he wants you to forgive yourself. He don't want you walking around here in shame, condemnation, and guilt. When you ask him to forgive you, he said he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It was an honor and it was a privilege to come to you live like I did tonight. And like I said, when I was in the world, I used to come out this time of night anyway. So it's nothing for me to come on and preach the gospel and teach the gospel. And I want to thank you and I want to let you know I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you unconditionally. He said, with loving kindness and tender mercies have he drawn you. He drawn you with loving kindness and tender mercy. God loves you the same way he loved his son, Jesus Christ. And I want to say once and once, I want to say it again. Always remember. Jesus Christ is Lord, and Minister Bernard love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And always remember, peace from the preacher, from the teacher, the preacher man, Minister Bernard Woods. Peace out. Remember, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen.